This week, we've had major software advancements for the Steam Deck. Plus, is Microsoft trying to muscle their way into the handheld PC market? There's been a lot of news this week, so let's talk about it. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. For people like me who load up their Steam Deck with more games than they can realistically play, storage space is at a premium on the Steam Deck. This goes double if you happen to buy the fantastically priced 64GB model. While trying to reduce used space on your Steam Deck, you might have noticed that the shader caches for games take up a substantial amount of space. Those shader caches, while large, do help cut down on in-game stutter, like we've seen with the pre-compiled shaders for Elden Ring. This, however, is a double-edged sword, as we've seen, as these shader caches take up a lot of space. So there's a trade-off. Without compiled shaders, players can experience in-game stuttering as the games will compile shaders while the game is being run. However, shader caches take up a lot of disk space. That is, until the release of Mesa 23.1. This looks like it's going to be killing two birds with one stone, as Valve confirmed to PC Gamer. This graphics driver update will reduce the Steam Deck shader cache by around 60%. This in and of itself would be impressive, but what's more is that there is going to be a notable improvement to stutter for games compiling shaders during gameplay. Valve's Pierre-Lou Griffet confirmed this to PC Gamer, along with tweeting about it back in February, where there is going to be performance increases around games that benefit from disabling simultaneous multi-threading on the CPU. One such performance for disabling SMT has been to boost performance on emulators such as the Wii U's emulator Simu and the Switch's emulator Yuzu. As of the time of writing, you still need to have the Deki Loader plugin uh, with power tools to be able to disable SMT, but Valve will eventually incorporate this feature directly into the Power Options menu. The Mesa 23.1 driver update is set to be released in early May. However, us deck players will probably be waiting for SteamOS 3.5 to receive it. Overall, it'll be great to see shader cache sizes cut by 60%, but also to see that there will be notable improvements to stuttering while playing a game. It's incredible. It will be especially helpful for those of us who've decided to build their own Steam Deck consoles where shader caches are not able to be pre-compiled by Valve. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about how I've built my own Steam Deck console in the comments below. Next up, let's talk about KDE Connect. Now, they just received a grant from NLNet Foundation. With this grant, the KDE Connect team plans to improve discoverability and security and also introduce new features. If you're not sure what KDE Connect is, it's a method of connecting devices together to share files, clipboards, mouse and keyboard input, and more between devices. And KDE Connect is natively supported on the Steam Deck, meaning that you only need a KDE Connect client on your PC, and then you can share files and more between the Steam Deck and your PC. I've made a video about all of this here. So what is all the hubbub about with this announcement? Essentially, it means that developers will be able to work on KDE Connect full time. According to one developer on the project, uh, he plans on implementing three big things in KDE Connect 2.0. First is to make KDE Connect more reliable by implementing multicast DNS discoverability. Second, they want to focus on security by removing antiquated and insecure encryption ciphers and adding new, more secure ones. And finally, they plan to upgrade the desktop version to Qt6, which should improve the user interface and provide a more accessible experience for KDE Connect users. Now, I've made a video about KDE Connect and how to get it set up between your PC and your Steam Deck. You can check the link up here. Now, speaking of Qt, let's talk about Proton Up Qt. The latest version has dropped and it has a host of improvements. If you're not familiar with this app, it's a simple way of installing and managing Steam Play compatibility tools on your Linux machine, which includes the Steam Deck. This allows you to install custom versions of Proton, like GE Proton, the Proton Battle I Runtime, Lux Trapetta, and many others. These are incredibly useful tools that allow you to maximize your Steam Deck gaming experience and makes the whole process a cinch. In this release, they've added Proton TKG, Vanilla Wine, and several other compatibility tools, as well as supporting them across Lutris, Heroic Game Launcher, and others. Community tools like ProtonUpQt continue making deck management a painless experience, and I am extremely excited by everything that the community does on this front. And speaking of, if you enjoy this painless experience for Steam Deck news, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to signal to YouTube's algorithm that you want to see more videos just like this one. You can also subscribe to the channel if that's more your speed. Now, I want to give a special shout out to Webfreak, one of the most dedicated supporters and longest lived supporters on this channel. It's because of Webfreak and the 73 other members that I'm able to continue making videos just like this one. I get to keep the lights on here, and we do have a lot of lights. 
Also, I'm not sure if you've noticed this shirt, but you can pick one up just like this at the Heavy Element store, store.heavyelement.io. I've been developing these designs for a while and I think they've turned out pretty cool. Get one for yourself and support the show with the link below. Next up, I think this one's pretty interesting uh, and I'm trying hard to not read into it too much. Blizzard's president, Mike Ibarra, is that, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, followed the official Steam Deck Twitter account. Now this probably means nothing, seeing as he's been following Steam, Valve, Xbox, Riot Games, and many other industry accounts for ages. But one could hope that Blizzard would bring their games to the Steam Deck. Maybe Blizzard.net launcher on the deck? Maybe games being distributed through Steam? That would be pretty cool. And while it is exciting to speculate on such things, uh, I really do need to break myself of the habit of reporting on what essentially boils down to gossip from a dying platform. You're better than this, Gardner. Knock it off. I'm sorry, I got political on you for a second. <laughs> Next up, Naughty Dog has dropped a new patch for The Last of Us Part 1 with many fixes for the notoriously buggy title. While many of them are fixes for the PC version of the game, if we scroll down, there is a dedicated Steam Deck section. As the headline might suggest, there are fixes that are targeted for the Steam Deck and the deck alone. This is interesting since Naughty Dog has previously said that they were gonna focus on fixing the PC version before resubmitting for verification. Hopefully the issues that they've been addressing in the most recent patches for the game are resulting in better deck support and that fans of The Last of Us will be able to play the game through their deck pretty soon. Okay, the main story this week is Microsoft working on a gaming handheld experience for Windows. What they're working on here seems to be an improved gamepad user experience for Windows. And what that boils down to is that Microsoft is working on yet another PC gaming launcher that will be focused on launching the games on your PC, be it from Steam, Epic Game Store, etc. Now, I know many people will rejoice at this news as Windows is an objectively terrible experience on a handheld, but the fact is, this is yet another Trojan horse. Microsoft's going to muddy up the PC gaming experience by introducing another launcher as if we need one more, and they will in all likelihood provide a serviceable UI that can launch any game on your system with a gamepad. But I can just see it now. I mean, a year or so later, they're gonna introduce a game store through the UI powered by the Microsoft Store, or maybe they'll call it Xbox Series W. I mean, who knows at this point, Microsoft's terrible at branding. And I can guarantee you that the games you buy from Microsoft or Xbox Game Pass on Windows is going to be the best experience through this launcher. And finally, they'll make the experience of launching a game that's external to the Windows Store worse in a myriad of ways, be it buggy overlays that break compatibility or what have you. This is how Microsoft operates. It's how they've always conducted business and it's how this will play out if it ever even makes it to Windows 11. Look, I think that it's a good thing that Microsoft is working to make Windows a better experience on handhelds, because the fact of the matter is, it's bad right now, it's really bad. But Microsoft is also a malignant force in the world. They have no original ideas and only know how to muscle their way into markets with worse versions of what's already available, but because of their marketing and their money, they make a worse product that is dominant, making the entire industry worse off. And I could go on and on about this, but I'll spare you a diatribe for now. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I mean, should Microsoft focus on making the Windows 11 experience on handhelds better? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I wanna give a special shout out to my friends who make this show a reality. It's because of the folks you're seeing over here that I'm able to continue making videos just like this. So if you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can use the links below to get your name listed over here. And thanks. That's gonna do it for now though. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. And I'll see you next time.